let's take a trip back to the 90s. We're sharpening our knives and diving deep into the decade that brought us some of the most interesting slashers ever. Get ready to relive the screams, the scares, and the suspense as we rank the top 10 slasher movies of the 90s on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. The 1990s were a very interesting time for the horror genre. Gone were the days of slashers being churned out faster than you can say the word slasher. Even the major franchises were no longer being received very well. The overall popularity of the subgenre was dwindling and taking even more of a back burner than normal. As the decade progressed, the once reliable formula of masked killers and gratuitous gore began to lose its grip on audiences. The endless sequels and imitators that flooded the market led to a sense of oversaturation and fatigue. Furthermore, the cultural zeitgeist was shifting. The gritty, nihilistic tone that had characterized the 1980s was giving way to a more self-aware, ironic sensibility in the 1990s. This change in tone made the straightforward brutality of slasher films feel increasingly out of touch. Despite this new era, the 90s weren't without a few sleeper hits. Slasher movies that I love. There are a few obvious ones and a few that might be a little unexpected. So I want to shed some light on all of these movies from my favorite subgenre. I think it's time we dive right into this. So grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. Starting us off at number 10 is Bride of Chucky. This movie shook things up in the slasher scene of the late 90s. By then, the whole psycho killer with a knife thing had gotten a bit stale, but this movie knew how to have fun with it, especially since Scream had came out two years prior. Instead of being mostly serious like the first few Child's Play movies, it embraced the silliness of a killer doll. It was like, yeah, this is ridiculous and we're totally in on the joke. That's what made it such a breath of fresh air. A lot of people loved it because it wasn't afraid to poke fun at itself. It had all of the blood and gore you'd expect from a slasher flick, but it also had a ton of funny moments and clever references. It wasn't just for diehard horror fans, it was for anyone who wanted a good laugh and a few scares. It showed that even in a genre that can get pretty predictable, there's always room to try something new. Plus, let's not forget Tiffany. Chucky's equally messed up girlfriend brought a whole new level of craziness to the franchise. Their twisted relationship was both hilarious and terrifying, making them a killer duo unlike any other. Coming in at number nine is Uncle Sam. While this 1996 film certainly features a slasher villain and plenty of gory kills, its place within the slasher cultural of the 1990s is a bit more peripheral than central. Released in the back half of the decade, it arrived at a time when the slasher subgenre was already undergoing significant transformation and self-parody. The film's themes, revolving around a vengeful Gulf War veteran, tap into a specific cultural anxiety of the time, setting it apart from the more traditional stalk and slash formula. This thematic focus, along with the direct-to-video release, meant it didn't achieve the same level of mainstream recognition as other films of the decade. However, Uncle Sam holds a certain appeal for fans of B-movie horror and those seeking slashers with a more overt political subtext. Its satirical edge and over-the-top gore offer a glimpse into the evolving landscape of the genre in the 90s, where filmmakers were experimenting with new approaches and pushing boundaries. Though not a defining entry in the slasher canon, it remains an interesting footnote in the genre's history. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror. We're delivering it to your screen every week. At number eight, we have Candyman. Released in 1992, this movie is a standout in 90s slasher movies. Sure, it's got the whole hook-handed killer and bloody murders thing, but it's way more than just your average slasher flick. This movie's set in the Cabrini Green Project in Chicago, and it uses the Candyman legend to talk about some pretty serious stuff. 
race, class, the whole messed up urban situation. And Candyman himself isn't just some psycho in a mask. He's got a very tragic backstory, being a victim himself who's out for revenge. In the early 90s, when slasher movies had become formulaic, Candyman was something different. It's got that mix of scary stuff, social commentary, and visuals you won't forget. People loved it then, and it's still got that power today. It's proof that horror movies can make you think and have a lot to say, and that's why Candyman is a classic. But despite that fact, there are some movies that I just enjoy more from the 90s. Next up at number 7, we have The Dentist. The Dentist is a very fascinating yet somewhat overlooked entry in the slasher subgenre of the 1990s. While it didn't achieve the mainstream success or cultural impact of some of its contemporaries, it carved out a niche for itself with its unique blend of psychological horror and graphic violence. The film centers on Dr. Alan Finestone, a seemingly successful dentist whose pristine life unravels as he descends into madness, inflicting horrific torture upon his patients. This focus on a professional, seemingly normal individual as the killer sets it apart from many slashers of the time, tapping into a fear of the mundane and those we trust. While the traditional masked killer stalks teenagers formula still held sway, Films like this one explore different themes and character motivations. Its emphasis on the psychological torment and graphic dental torture also pushed boundaries. Its disturbing premise, unsettling performance by Corbin Burnson, and unflinching gore offer a glimpse into the darker corners of the human psyche. Our number six entrant is going to be Ice Cream Man. This Clint Howard flick definitely has a weird and kinda controversial spot in 90s slasher scene. While it wasn't as big or well known as some of the other slashers back then, it still got a cult following and people still talk about it today. The movie's all about this creepy ice cream man, Gregory Tudor, who lures kids with his treats before killing them. It's grenadine for my ice cream treats. The whole thing is super unsettling with Howard's performance being genuinely chilling and the contrast between innocent kids and brutal violence really hits hard. It was exactly what some horror fans were looking for at the time. Even though it's not perfect, Ice Cream Man still an important part of 90s slasher movies. It has messed up themes, a villain you won't forget and an atmosphere that'll stick with you. It pushed boundaries and earned its spot as a cult classic for horror fans who like their movies a little twisted. But don't let that fool you. This is still a very comedic, goofy movie that's not meant to be taken too seriously. Just sit back and go along for the ride. Number five in this ranking rumble is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Released in 1994, this movie was basically a test run for Scream. The movie basically takes apart all the slasher stuff that the Nightmare on Elm Street movies helped create in the first place. It brings Freddy Krueger into the real world and has him go against the actors and the people who made the original films. It's like a commentary on how horror can be powerful and even mess with our heads in real life. This meta twist was a bold move that really paid off in my opinion. New Nightmare came out at a time when slasher movies were changing. A new era was being ushered in using self-aware humor and meta elements to redefine the genre and New Nightmare was a part of that. It knew all the slasher cliches but still gave us a fresh perspective, making it a movie that makes you think and it's still effective today. New Nightmare is still a favorite for horror fans. It's meta story, the way it mixes up fiction and reality, and the super creepy portrayal of Freddy Krueger make it a unique entry in the franchise. At number four, we have Urban Legend. This movie totally rode the wave of the 90s horror revival that Scream kicked off. Back then, everyone was buzzing about the internet and how fast urban legends could spread online. This movie really tapped into that fear, making it a perfect fit for the times. I mean, We've all heard most of these urban legends before, and seeing them on screen was pretty cool if you ask me. The whole plot revolves around a college campus where people are getting killed in ways that mirror these classic urban legends. 
It was a clever idea and the cast of young actors made it super relatable for teens of the time who were glued to their computers. Sure, it wasn't as critically acclaimed as Scream, but it definitely found its own audience. Urban Legend was all about the anxieties of the late 90s. It captured the weirdness of the internet when it was still new and mysterious. Looking back, it's like a time capsule of that era and a reminder of how horror movies always evolve with the times. I have a lot of nostalgic feelings with this movie. Coming in at number three is I Know What You Did Last Summer. Another film released after the popularity of Scream redefined horror, this film was also written by Kevin Williamson, who wrote Scream. Following the success of Scream a year prior, this teen slasher flick capitalized on the renewed interest in the genre, delivering a suspenseful and thrilling story of four friends haunted by a deadly secret from their past. The film's premise, centered around a hit-and-run accident and a subsequent cover-up, tapped into a primal fear of being held accountable for one's actions. As the mysterious killer begins targeting the group, the film expertly builds tension and suspense using classic slasher tropes like jump scares, chase scenes, and the reveal of the killer's identity. It represents a specific moment in time, capturing the anxieties and fears of teenagers in the late 1990s. The film's iconic imagery, including the fisherman's hook and the chilling phrase, I know what you did last summer, has been ingrained in pop culture. This is another film that I just have a lot of nostalgia for. I just think it is so much fun. Our number two entrant in this ranking rumble is Halloween H2O. H2O basically took that Scream format and applied it to Michael Myers. And for me, that works. I understand a lot of the gripes with this movie. The mask itself isn't great and the portrayal of Michael isn't stellar. And don't even get me started on that dang CGI mask that I just can't freaking unsee. But beyond all that, this movie is so much fun. I love Jamie Lee Curtis's portrayal of Lori in this movie. She's a broken, paranoid alcoholic. She has these constant nightmares, but when she's faced with those fears, she turns into a fierce, determined fighter who refuses to let her brother steal another second from her. I love the setting. The secluded private school puts Michael in a brand new environment. There's a healthy dose of meta humor, particularly with the inclusion of Janet Lee, Curtis's own mother, who drives away from the school in the same exact car that you see her drive in Psycho. You've got Josh Hartnett, Michelle Williams, Alan Arkin, and of course, LL Cool J. These supporting characters are a huge part of why I love this movie. They all just bring this certain feel to the movie that makes it so entertaining. Our final entrant in this ranking rumble is, of course, Scream. How could it be anything else? This movie completely redefined the slasher subgenre and brought it back into prominence. It's a film that knows its own tropes and yet manages to subvert them, creating a suspenseful and thrilling experience that's both a love letter to the genre and a critique of it. The film's opening sequence featuring Drew Barrymore is a masterclass in suspense, setting the tone for the rest of the movie. The film's self-awareness is evident throughout, with characters discussing horror movie rules and the killer using those very rules against them. This meta-commentary adds another layer of depth to the film, making it not just a scary movie, but a smart one too. Scream also benefits from a cast of memorable characters, including Nev Campbell's Sidney Prescott, who became a Scream Queen for a new generation. The film's clever dialogue, suspenseful set pieces, and shocking twists made it a thrilling ride from start to finish. Its impact on horror cinema is still felt today, and that is why Scream is the best slasher from the 1990s. But there you have it. Those are my top 10 slashers of the 1990s. If you think I left any out, let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, I do have a discount code you can use to save 20% off of your entire order, so check it out. All of my merch is available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Andrew Dreamer. And if you would like to support the channel in any way at all, check out my Patreon page. All of the links are in the description. Also, if you enjoyed this look at some 90s classics, be sure to like this video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.